raising awareness is the most important thing about electric vehicle to get rid of stigmas. So 2007, we took two internal combustion engine vehicles, which was the Kango and the Fluence. Um, we adapted those and they became electric vehicles or electric vehicle offering. Very quickly, there was a lot of interest. Then we were followed by the, the Twizy and then we produced our first full electric vehicle. So it was off the electric vehicle platform. So really that's where the success story starts from. We faced a quite an unusual situation in 2012. More so from the point of view is that we had a lot of, of local people who would go to Paris, London, Milan, etc., through Europe, and saw the Twizy, um, and decided they would like a Twizy. So they personally imported vehicles, they purchased vehicles throughout Europe, personally and imported them. Mm -hmm. And we found all of a sudden that these vehicles appeared in the market, which we weren't aware of, and we weren't distributing at the time as an electric vehicle. So we decided at that point in time we can't have vehicles in the market which we can't support from an after-sales point of view. Um, so we looked at, we need to bring the vehicle ourselves and distribute the vehicle directly from here. On the back of that, we obviously make sure that we test. So our first point was that we tested the vehicle for the climate here. It was fine, it worked properly. We saw at this point in time, which was 2014, an opportunity that if we've got interest in electric vehicle on Twizy, why not test the market with the Zoe? D were at that point were looking, the government had introduced the strategy of having 10% of their fleets the following year that needed to be green. Um, D were introducing charging stations, so the partnership between us and D was born to provide them with the first electric vehicles for their fleet for their charging stations. We had the vehicles, they had the charging stations, so we were able to showcase that in that way. Uh, the King of Jordan had gone to the Davos. He spoke with uh, the then president of Renault at the time and was talking about that he wanted to change his total fleet to electric vehicles for his Royal Court employees. So we were given a tender at the time, which we and uh, some other manufacturers obviously put in for. Uh, we were successful along with others and we delivered 100 Zoes, or Zoes into uh, Jordan at that point in time in 2014-15 with no infrastructure. At that point in time there was no infrastructure in Jordan so Royal Court we worked on a system of a local type infrastructure for charging for the employee at home and a small charging facility in the Royal Court and they were going from internal combustion engines where they had total freedom to drive an electric vehicle um, suddenly all changed. A year later um, we were asked to provide another hundred vehicles. What can we expect from Renault in terms of the lineup and what you guys have coming up um, in the next few years? We, we will continue with, with small and mid-range electric vehicles and that's where we see our strategy today. Um, as we move and as the markets develop in the future, there's no reason for us not to have a larger electric vehicle. But in the short term future, as we see at the moment, it will be more of the, the small and the mid-range mid vehicles. We will introduce hybrid. Um, up until now, we've not introduced any hybrid. But there is a demand for hybrid in the market. With the alliance that we have with Nissan, um, and Mitsubishi, obviously our other two partners. Uh, we share the technologies, so we will introduce hybrid. So we will have roughly 22 vehicles that will come in the next three to four years, uh, which will be pure EV and hybrid. Talk about challenges. In 2017, you became the customer service and the quality director at Renault. And I know, you know, personally, you know, because I've been following you, I know you're relentless in terms of raising standards, um, achieving best practices both in sales and in after sales, um, and changing the consumer journey and experience at Renault and at, at your dealers. Tell us some of the, the, the milestones, some of the, the, the proudest moments you had, and what are the, the challenges that are going to come or, or you foresee? Uh, I've seen a lot of changes here. 
and I came from Europe where the deliverance of customer service and the way a vehicles are under a totally different way at the time when I come. So I had to adapt. I think when you first come here, you come with a lot of good intentions and think you're going to change the world. Mm -hmm. Then you need to understand that you have to adapt to the region, yes. but at the same time there's a great opportunity to develop. And I think what we've done over the past eight years, um, we've developed um, the delivery of customer service here from our point of view. Uh, we can match what we deliver in Europe. When you kind of look at the whole journey, where is the biggest challenge right now in this region for people? What, where is the worry? Is it at the, have they not seen it yet? Or there's just uh, some uncertainty? Or is it in the middle? Is it around the charging? Or is it the resale value that they're worried about? What is kind of the big thing that stands in the way of us selling more EVs in the region? The first thing I think is, is that despite we've had a lot of changes in technology, Battery autonomy has increased. It was 100 kilometers, now we're at four, 500 kilometers. Uh, charging times have reduced, but still they are the two biggest areas, and I, I feel that it's like an albatross at times, um, with people in the street who don't understand electric vehicles. When you talk to people, the first thing they say is, well, how long does the battery last? Um, how long does it take to charge? What Expo is going to do for us is, Expo is going to highlight the future and show people what the capabilities of the automotive industry are and what is going to come. Today it might be a dream, but tomorrow it will be a reality. So now I think Expo will really, really promote EV, I'm hoping. And we might get rid of some of the anxieties by this because a lot of people will come, a lot of people will visit and we'll raise awareness and you know you know me quite well. One of the things I've always said is awareness. I've always felt that raising awareness is the most important thing about electric vehicle to get rid of stigmas. And that's one thing that we all try and work on and we just need to continue. But Expo will do it for us. I'm convinced Expo will really, really promote and accelerate everything. And after all these years, what advice would you give for somebody either thinking about joining the industry or who just started? The, the industry today um, is an exciting industry because we have electric vehicles, we have co connectivity. Um, the way you sell a car today uh, is totally different. Uh, 1.3 visits to the showroom a pur is a purchase, whereas opposed to five to 10 years ago, it was viewed at five visits before you purchased. So digitalization and the way we purchase now is totally different. So it's an exciting industry on the basis that the technology is developing, it's exciting. The way we sell, the way we service, everything has become digitalized. Um, so we look at omni-channels, various different other things. It's an industry which is in line, I think, and exciting as the IT industry because a lot of things now uh, work together on when we look at these, these two areas. So if anyone that's coming in, um, I w one thing I would say is you need to be dedicated, you need to be hardworking, you need to believe, but you need to be enthusiastic and want to accept the challenge. And the challenges are there if you want to come into this industry today, for sure.